So look, again, we've, we've all done this sort of stuff. And I think it's really important to think about it on a per cow basis, okay? And here's just one example. And I mean, it'd be great if you all went and just, and just thought this through for yourselves. Because we always think about the cow in isolation. But it's also important to talk about it when you're, when you're looking at your numbers on a herd basis, all right? Because it's a, it's a big number, all right? And the interesting thing, all right, if you, at dollar twenty, so that should be at $12. So that's a mistake there, sorry. If we change that by $2, oh sorry, by two litres, and that goes up by another dollar twenty, that impact per day is, is profound, all right? It's, it's um, 200, I'm going to have to change this slide, Liam, because I've got, a, I've got an error in it, mate. <laughs> um, if we go up by another two litres, it's another dollar twenty on top per day across 200 cows. So every day that becomes about $240 a day difference in milk income. Right, you put that across a week, and this is where multipliers become really, really important in dairy. Okay, it's seven times 240. All right, so it's 1,400 plus another 280. You know, sorry, 140. It's $1,340 a week difference it makes. But by, by if you push the liters, yep. and the fat comes down. Yep. You can be giving the milk companies some liters of milk, and you're getting nothing for it. You've got to be careful that you're looking at your kilos, milk, solids going out the door, not yeah. just the liters. I know, so you're right, you're absolutely right, okay? But, and that's why it's important to look at your margin over feed costs when you're making the decisions, not just the output, but also the costs of the input and correcting it for your test becomes really, really important. Right? Yeah. So you could go up two litres, okay? And your butter fat comes down 0.2, all right? But if your protein stays the same, well, you, you might actually be in front. So you've just got to look at not just fat in isolation, not just protein in isolation, not just litres. So again, going back and doing those corrections based on what actually goes out is really, really important. But it's a good point, Rob. So daily feed cost calculations. And again, <clears throat> we just need to basically run this through for each farm. You know, it's your kilograms of feed, a dollar per kilo of feed, times dollars per kilogram as fed. So if it's 600 bucks a tonne for your feed and you're feeding six kilos, it's three bucks 60, all right? Similarly, supplementary fodder costs. Now again, a lot of you guys here haven't been hugely exposed to supplementary fodder costs, have you? You've been able to do self-contained, self-contained, self-contained. You've just moved to be not self-contained on fodder, okay? So these are gonna be important things for you guys to run through with your decision making, okay? Is, is what's that? cost of hay landed back with you and you do need to look at the things like the freight subsidy as part of that costing. The nice thing is a smaller farm, all right, because it's a dollar amount per farm, yep. you guys are going to be in a really good position because <coughs> you're unlikely to get out to the $40,000 cap. So you can really play that freight subsidy game to, its, to what it's designed to do, to really support you, okay? And we'll, we'll, we'll look at, uh, I've got a particular case study on a barley transaction that I'll show you a bit later, which was really, really interesting. So Tim, you're self-contained with fodder at this stage? Uh, yeah, I'm hoping to cut some the next winter. Okay, yeah. excellent. Good, good, right good. Outside. Yep. So again, different people got different circumstances, but that's something we need to consider. And again, whether or not you put your pasture costs in it per cow per day, it's interesting seeing Kerry's figures. That's what we've always come up to. I think it's somewhere between 14 cents and 20, 20 cents a kilo. And again, I think those prices tend to go up the poorer we go, you know, a lot because you've got that fixed cost at the front end of seed, preparation, etc. And if you're only doing four ton off that compared to six, seven or eight ton, all right, those costs per unit harvested go, go up dramatically. And the water costs are important as well, obviously. I mean, end of the day, if you're in the hunter, generally you're going to be exposed to power costs, okay, because you are going to be irrigating for, uh, you know, most of the farms function here, not because it's a good dry land area to dairy, it's because we've got a really nice river that provides, you know, the people that are on it with, with water the majority of times, yeah. So it's a reality. Your costs are going to be higher to grow grass than someone dry land at, in the Kiwa Valley. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Yep. But those guys down there are also probably going to be at one cow to the hectare, okay? Maybe one and a half. You guys are going to be three, okay? You guys are going to be closer to two cows to the hectare on, on the two and a half. Tim, what's your stocking rate? 1.4, great position to be in. And again, 
you know, if, if your business can allow you to do that, that's, that's, that's a good thing to be in a drought. Because if it's 1.5 cows to the hectare, okay, and you want to feed your cow seven ton total, all right, and you might only want to feed two ton of grain, it means you only need to be growing something like, you know, five, six, seven tons of to ha harvested to be in a pretty good spot. Okay, so it's, a, it's, a, it's perhaps a lower return space, but it's a lower risk space on those low stocking rates, and that could be perfectly appropriate. Resilient. Potential resilient. Pardon? Resilient. So resilient, absolutely. Resilient. Highly res it's a resilient structure. Yeah. And yeah. Going back to, I guess, where you started, one of the biggest things when I went to New Zealand is you go to every dairy and they know their stocking rate, but they know their system. Yes. In terms of boarding feed, how much they're feeding pasture per animal, like they know their system and what they're trying to achieve. Yes. Everything you sort of talked about at the start. So yeah. it just goes to show it's bloody important. And it doesn't matter whether they're in a, in a one or a five in terms of their systems. Yep. Or boarding feed. They get where they're at. They're all profitable within different years. Yep. And, and they're all profitable in terms of return assets. Yep. Close to all right, so margin over feed cost calculation, and this is what you were talking, Rod, which was really, really, you know, important. It's your milk income per day minus your feed cost per cow per day, all right? Because at the end of the day, that tells you what you've got left after you've fed the cow to do everything else with that you need to do, including the I in EBIT, right, which has yeah, to be paid. All your cash costs. All your cash costs come out of that. But again, it's important to calculate it per cow per day, per farm per day, and per farm per week. Because it's not until you start putting the multiplier of 200 for your number of cows and then seven, okay, on top of that, that you start to see a real difference. And as your margin over feed cost shifts by 50 cents per cow per day, all right, that doesn't sound like lots until you multiply it by 200 and then you multiply it by seven, all right? So when we're talking about feeding decisions, as we go forward and production decisions. While the costs are an important part of the equation, all right, they're not the whole part of the equation. If we are making decisions to change the way we feed animals, we need to be focused on the impact on output. All right, because we can pull costs out of rations very quickly by not feeding cows. And accountants love that, all right, because your costs go down, all right. But the flip side is if the 50 cents of cost comes with, with two litres of milk disappearing down the tube, what happens to your margin of over feed costs? It disappears. Similarly, there can be arguments at times to feed more and to increase feed if it drives an improved margin over feed cost. So right. I guess the biggest thing between that is that, that sums okay, but to yep. know what the, the extra margin you need. Correct. So that's a good sum to start with, but then you know the difference. But then you need to do it on a weekly basis or whatever it is, so that you know if you want to change the feed, so you want to add some kilos in or mm. change the diet or whatever, then you know the difference that margin's made. You've got to know where the cut off point is. Absolutely. Change, more so than just the initial number. Because everyone will have a different, um, you know, different number between their income per capita to their feed cost per capita. Yep. And that margin? Yep. Know oh. where you know how much, you, know, how much yeah. you need to have. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You do. Yeah. And yeah. Absolutely. And also, that uh, some of this is just basic nutrition information. I mean, the, the, the previous fallback position would be if we're short of feed, feed more hay. Because hay was traditionally perceived as being cheap. Yeah. Hay is now, ex relative to other feed costs, it's actually expensive to buy. All right. So we can say if barley's going to come into the farm, at 50 cents a kilo, and hay might come in at 40 cents yeah. a kilo, all right, we can probably get even a better margin out of feeding another kilo of barley than we can out of another kilo of hay, even though the hay is a little bit cheaper. Okay, if that gives us an extra litre, comparatively, which is about what it'll do, generally, all right, then, yeah, it's 10 cents more expensive, but our income benefit might be net 40 cents per cow per day. So, so these decisions are... are they're difficult to make in isolation, all right? And it is where, if you have the, the benefit of some support to help make those decisions, it can have a huge impact on, the, on your business. So, so thinking about it 
in terms of both of these numbers becomes really, really important. Because we often think about just reducing cost, okay, but not the consequence on income. And at times, the appropriate decision may be to increase cost, okay, which goes against a lot of what we're fed, if you pardon the pun. Because it's all about profit and it's all about margin over cost. Yeah. And this is, this is, this is huge. Okay. We, this is huge. 50 cents a cow a day. I mean, just sit there and do, do this number, everyone, on your calculator. Do 0.5 times 200 times 365. Pardon? You're just looking at yeah, movies. <laughs> Fun? 36 and a half grand. 36 and a half grand. Okay? Okay, so that's by shifting margin over feed cost across 12 months by 50 cents. It's $36,000. Okay? Some farm profit That's, yeah, or a very high proportion of farm profit. Okay? So I'm not saying that that's the answer to what you're doing every day, but that's what should be behind your decision making. Okay, margin over feed cost, because everything else feeds from it. Yep. All right. You've got the data there, you just need to use it. Absolutely, Shona. And it's not an exhaustive calculation. So look, here's just an, an example of this break-even production per cow per day, all right? This is, this is a typical farm that might be a bit short of feed, you know, and, and it's an interesting one for you, Scott, because you can start looking at this a bit differently too. Yeah. If you're looking at selling hay for 600 bucks a tonne or feeding it to a cow, yeah. you need to be sliding in 60 cents there, yeah. all right, right, to see what that really, really means. <laughs> okay. Pardon? The hay will really come out in front. It possibly can, Max, at times, and it depends. Sometimes it's about whether you're trying to preserve an asset. So culling decisions aren't all about the now, okay? Culling decisions can be about preserving the asset, all right, with the view that in the future we might be able to draw down off that. Because it might be that for six weeks Scott needs to feed six hundred dollar hay, all right, when he knows that in six weeks' time his forage sorghum yeah. comes online at, at thirteen cents a kilo dry matter. Yeah. All right. The so other again, thing you've got to look at it could rain. It could. That Six hundred dollars a ton for oh, for ton for hay could be worth three hundred dollars or four hundred. Oh, uh, that's what he owes by more cows. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, but that's a really that important point. That's right, exactly. But un but unless you're yeah, chucking yeah. these sort of numbers around, <coughs> this is important. <laughs> so 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 where you guys are at now with nearly everything coming in on a truck for a while, you know, it's it's really important to sort of understand what that total ration is per per cow per day. Okay. And then you can say, well, what's my, what's my break-even price on purchase feed for, for any cow? Right? So it's a total of your feed costs divided by the price per litre. Right? In this situation, 7 kilos concentrate, 5 kilos of hay at 40 cents a kilo. It's 9 bucks 20 just to pay her individual feed bills. And that might be OK. okay? Nine, sorry, 9.2 litres just to pay her feed bills. Okay, if you've got a herd that's below 9.2 litres, you're probably in a bit of trouble at this stage. <laughs> All right? But don't laugh, because there's, there's, there's a few of them out there. All right? Um, so that then tells us then, well, I've got cows that are below this number. I can start making decisions around those cows. All right? Now, importantly, you've got to look at it with a little bit of a grain of salt. Staler cows tend to have higher tests. All right. So quite often, they might be contributing litres that are worth 65 or 66 cents yeah. into, the, into the equation. So some of those back-end cows at the back-end of lactation, milk fat and milk protein rise quite dramatically as we get closer to dry off. So you know, look at it with a bit of a grain of salt. The flip side is that if you're sitting on the margins, particularly on cell count, and you're copying cell count penalties, some of these can be the best ones to offload because they're often the highest cell count cows. One of the best ways to improve milk price is to bring yourself into a premium milk band, all right, as far as cents per litre. What's the impact of coming down 50 from, say, if you were at 300, Cathy or Ewan, per cents per litre basis? It's a cent a litre if you're over 200, 200, uh, yes. Yep. So your premium band compared to your next band up, 
what's the differential there? It's about three percent of your total milk price, including incentives. Yep. So that's huge. Mm -hmm. So again, if we're looking at what's our EBIT been on a lot of these farms, one percent or three to return on assets, you know, or the, you know, very small numbers. If you're getting yourself back into that premium band through cell count management. That can be a very, very good way of improving your profit. If you look at that twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars that that may be, depending on business size, as a percentage of profit, that's profound. Okay. The other thing you need to realise though, if you're drawing cows off, and this is really important, if you're drawing cows off based on this, you need to look at the cost of feeding dry cows, particularly if you're drawing cows off early. Okay, because if you've got a put dry cows out and fully hand feed them, that's a pure cost with no short term income. Are you better to leave them in their stale and cover the cost? Absolutely Matt. So this becomes really important. If you're going to be out there drawing cows off to feed them hay yeah. at 40 yeah. cents a kilo and get zero return, you might be better off getting seven or eight litres off them, yeah. all right, and losing 50 cents a dollar a day yeah. instead of losing five or six dollars a day, okay? And they can be high testing cows. So one of the things that we have actually looked at, which is a bit counterintuitive, is in drought when people are hand feeding their dry herd, it's actually holding cows out to and only having a 42 day dry period, so a shorter dry period, because we're going to punish them more by putting them out and it's going to cost us more to feed them than it is to hold them in. Okay, if you've got plenty of standing dry feed, different story. We take them out and put them out in some urea blocks and standing dry feed. All right, but if it's a fully hand-fed ration, that's a very, very different space. Okay. And again, I'm Please. Keep saying this all through your presentation, yeah. now, but it, it's good data, and you know, if you're herd recording, you've got that information there. You can look on an individual basis. Absolutely. I'll show you some really cool stuff of herd recording a bit later yeah. on on culling cows. Yeah. So that's spot on. Having data and information becomes more important. And it's interestingly, it's one of the first things that often goes yeah. when people are cutting costs is their data collection and particularly herd recording. Okay, the fully purchased fed cow cost day, we've touched on this already. And basically this is, this is the cost that, the, that, that we talked about with Josh before of what the last cow in your herd actually costs if she's on a fully supplemented ration. Okay, and particularly if you've got pasture still in your system, because in effect, that last cow that comes in, okay, is robbing pasture from other cows that has to then be replaced with feed you buy for them. All right. So the effect of that last cow when you're highly stocked, okay, is that she's on a fully purchased ration. So in this situation, all right, at 18 kilograms of dry matter intake, and a cow that's on an average of say it's $450 a ton dry matter, okay, the daily ration cost for that last cow is about $8.10. A day. All right. So, how much milk do I need to cover her? Well, she's 13.5 litres. So, Josh, that's the cost again of bringing that last cow in on a fully purchased ration. Now, interestingly, if I can put a ration together and I can get those cows doing 24 or 25 litres, that may actually be a decision to go forward. All right. And particularly on current milk prices. And one of the things that we haven't had good back calibration on has been the impact of the improvement in milk price. It's never going to be as good as what we'd like it to be, Max, you know, and that's fine, I, I concur, you know, but that improvement in milk price has shifted these margin over feed cost calculations and we need to think about that as well as we go forward and if we continue to see improvement, you know, we need to look at those differentials between where feed costs are now and that price per litre of milk or, or per kilo of milk solids yeah. in making those decisions as we move forward. Because we've had some guys down at Bega that were buying 100% of their ration. They went and bought cows because they were able to get onto well-priced hay, they were able to get onto well-priced grain, and they contracted that in, and they bought some cows, okay, to increase their stocking rate because they know in their feedlot system that they've got, they can turn a good positive margin over feed costs. And when it rains in that situation, you know, they'll be able to make good money off very low cost food. So it's a bit a bit against the grain, but you can use it in both well, directions. Yeah, well look and, and again grain. and grain. But interesting Max, you know, we're getting we're getting, you know, milk closer to sixty cents. Yeah. All right. Yeah. People that are buying barley well, and I'll show you some prices of barley, it's not you far be off. Getting more than 60 cents now. 
Pardon? They should, they should be getting Absolutely. More. So I'm just using that as a point, yeah. a central point, you know, <laughs> plus minus yeah, seven, yeah, depending on where you're at. Yeah. Okay. Buying barley, we've had some quoted landed prices at 395 to 400 bucks a tonne landed. All right, so now we're talking about that 20 cent differential coming in between a kilo of feed and a litre of milk. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to be good to get that margin, you've got to be at the upper end of feed conversion efficiency. But recalibrating the way people are thinking on that interaction between that feed cost now, and you're going to have to work pretty smartly to get, take, take advantage of that feed cost, because I don't think it's going to hang around a long time. Okay.